Hello, I'm Elisa Bender with the Hispanic Festival Incorporated. And in collaboration with the Missouri History Museum, we'll be presenting Dia de los Muertos. And we have created a beautiful altar room for you to see. We have an altar by Heather Mumi dedicated to Freddie. There are several traditional Dia de los Muertos themes, including very Mexican inspired items, plus several personal effects that she remembers Freddie by. We also have a beautiful Peruvian altar made by Perlita Broilis that is dedicated to her family. We also have a beautiful altar full of dolls representing all the different Hispanic countries and including a Katrina. And now let's hear from all the creators of the beautiful altars. Hi, my name is Lizette Mata and I am raised and born in Mexico, Guanajuato. Guanajuato is a town that is celebrates big, the Dea de los Muertos, death and life. So today I'm gonna tell you a story that we always heard when we were little that is about El Torito. El Torito represents the seven capital sins and the Catholics, and the bull is the life, and at the end, the only one that is triumphant or the winner is the dead. So you had to play a game with this. Uh, you dance and you participate. Uh, we have to kill the bull, but actually at the end of the day, the dead comes and kill the bull, which is the dead. So uh, we wanna be presenting to you different um, things that we used to do at, at an altar. Uh, November 1st and November 2nd is a big celebration in Guanajuato in my town. We put an altar in memory of our disease, typically about our family members. So today I'm gonna be talking to you about the family Mata Segoviano who lives in a town in Salamanca. Salamanca is very important for the candles. So you will see a lot of the candles, especially the one that is in the middle. This candle is make of the bees thing that they produce to make honey. And uh, this town has a beautiful building of this type of tradition. The other candles are just uh, to symbolize, which is the light and the, and the road when they go to heaven. Uh, we also wanna be talking about the levels that we put. Uh, they could be from seven levels to three levels, typically represent the earth, the uh, purgatorio, and the glory, which is heaven. Uh, in my family, we are heavy believers in praying the rosary. Uh, this is a way for you to help them to the souls to reach heaven. And uh, we have a lot of articles here for Lady Guadalupe, typically an, an, an article that you have to use during an altar. And uh, you put a lot of saints to ask for prayers and they symbolize the cross of Jesus Christ in the middle. So these are uh, uh, two ways to celebrate life. One is to pray for the ones who are here in earth and another way to celebrate the ones that went to heaven. Uh, my members of my family here are uh, today especially celebrating this year in July. One of uh, our cousins passed, he was 53 years old. He was living in Juarez and unfortunately he was found dead. And, uh, but the rest of my members of my family, we always have the tradition that every time that a person passed, you have to build an altar and celebrate a mass. So you can do it either go to the cemetery or you can go to church and, and set up the way that you can do it. Um, another thing that you will see here is that we put a lot of the uh, articles that the people like when they were alive. So for example, for my grandpa, she used to drink a lot of chocolate, caliente, and it's a hot drink that you buy these bars. It has to be this brand for some reason, Abuelita. And uh, they, what you do is typically you go with the pot and you will go and stir the meal many, many times until it becomes very, very, very nice and, um, and hot. Uh, a lot of the things that you put is reading. If they like to do uh, reading books of the things uh, the maracas, we celebrate the life, the drinks, and um, we are heavy drinkers and, uh, in Mexico, especially in my town, we have the tequila, and you drink a lot of tequila. You put some water as well, so to, to help them as part of the symbols that celebrates in the south. Um, so uh, this is basically what is uh, my altar in, in Mexico, which is a big celebration, and I hope you enjoy. This altar today is dedicated to my brother, Eric Michael Hilberg, he passed away about 18 years ago in a car accident. So every year I do an altar for him and this year I did another one. So I'm so happy to be able to do that. So and you'll notice on the altar, there are different pictures of him throughout his life. 
And there's also some mementos from during, you know, during his life. And he enjoyed reading Goosebumps series. So there's some books from Goosebumps. He was really involved with Boy Scouts. So I've got an item up there that he created while he was in Boy Scouts. Also has a plane made out of Pepsi cans that he made himself. So, and you also may notice we have here four different bowls. And in the first bowl is water because the soul, he may be thirsty once he comes back. There's also salt for their taste buds so they can taste anything that they eat. There's also money in case they need money when they cross over and then some candy for them as well. So, and I hope you really liked it. There's also some food that he liked and enjoyed. And thank you so much for letting me create this today. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. Hello, my name is Nikki Beal. I was uh, born in Largo, Florida, and I was raised in Belleville, Illinois. Um, my family, I have family from Mexico, uh, family from Texas, and I have family from uh, France and uh, from Illinois. Um, this is my altar. What I usually like to do is the very top, I like to have Our Lady of Guadalupe. Um, my family, uh, both mine and my husband's, were raised Catholic and church was very important to us. So I like to have her up there at the very top as if she, like maybe she's looking down on my loved ones. Um, I also have here the cross, which also uh, is very important to us for the Catholic religion. Um, and then over here I have Lupita. Um, she belongs to my grandmother um, and she's always just a nice addition to my altar and I love to have her dressed up and uh, the dress that my grandmother found from Mexico. Um, and then what I like to choose for my offerings for my family, um, usually I like to choose food that, that they loved, that they enjoyed. So I have, for instance, over here on the table, menudo, which is a very popular dish that my um, grandmother, great-grandmother Maria would uh, fix on the holidays. And it was my grandfather's favorite food, uh, Jesse Aguilar. Um, which is him right here next to uh, the jet. He was a, uh, a pilot for the United States Air Force. Um, he passed away recently. Um, he was um, very well loved, they all were, but um, his uh, passing was difficult, but he had a very wonderful life. And the whole, uh, the whole point of the altar is, um, and, and Dia de los Huertos is uh, celebrating um, the past loved ones and their life. Um, anyways, I also have on here, um, which is his parents, um, Maria and Nicanor. And then I have um, my great grandparents, um, Philippa and Ernest. And then the next one down, I have uh, my other, my paternal uh, great grandfather and his wife, Eunice, and uh, his name was Pierre. Um, they, he is from France. Um, originally, his uh, last name was Pfeiffer, um, but then World War II, Germans forced him to change his name to Hagelstein, which is how I uh, gained uh, my maiden name, which is Hagelstein. And then one of their sons, which is Leo, my grandfather, um, he um, loved to do woodwork, and that is what this is right here. Um, you um, hang that outside, and the, uh, the wind will spin it. He was very talented with woodworking. He loved to make toys and everything for us grandkids. And then the next one down is from family from my husband's side. Um, I have William and Aurelia Beale, and I have Joan Voss Renner. Um, Aurelia Beale, uh, she loved to crochet. Um, every Christmas, she would make little ornaments for the grandkids. That's what's uh, next to her right here. Um, then. Uh, I believe what she would do is put money in there for the grandkids, and uh, we, uh, I believe they also would hang them on their Christmas trees. And then Joan, uh, she's very well known in Belva, Illinois, which is where her family is from. She was uh, an artist. Um, this is actually one of her drawings right here. Um, every year, Belva will hold a uh, art show, and they have an award named after her. 
And then I always, I always like to use uh, gold petals because they're very bright. And I believe that uh, the brighter the petals are, it would uh, guide my ancestors to the altar. And um, that is it. I hope you enjoy the altar and the rest of them. And happy Dios de los Muertos. Hello. This beautiful altar today was created by Hanini Hilberg, who is also my mom. Uh, dedicated to her sister, my aunt Hilda Nistaus. So you probably notice a lot of red, yellow, and green. This altar is inspired from Bolivia, South America, and other Dia Los Muertos traditions. Bolivia is the native country where she was born and raised. So you'll see a lot of red, yellow, and green all over. You also see a lot of religious icons. You'll see a lot of crosses, you'll see saints. She was a dedicated religious woman, devout Catholic, and God and religion was very, very important to her. Along with that, you will see several different hats from different countries. Those represent the different countries that she visited. She also lived in several countries and she loved to wear hats. So you'll also see a lot of flowers around, bright flowers, and those are there because then she can see, her spirit can see her way home, her way back to us during Dia de los Muertos. And you see a lot of different foods that she had. Food is there for when she comes back to eat, also represents different foods that she liked and different foods that she loved to cook, and she was a great cook. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the description and this beautiful altar dedicated to my Aunt Hilda. Hi, my name is Maria Yaksic, the Bolivian, and here I am going to be explaining to you some of the culture of uh, Bolivia for the Dia de los Muertos. Now, I have found that um, because of our um, immigration uh, here to the United States, we have kind of uh, picked some cultures and some um, customs and traditions from other cultures, and I did the same thing by now. And in Bolivia, we do have the Day of the Dead, but it only lasts two days. And um, on that day at noon, one of the big differences is that we have the holy water and we sprinkle the holy water in the altar, making sure that we only invite the good souls and that way we keep all the evil ones away. So as we invite um, the, the, our loved ones or the ones that are, we're commemorating, we make sure that we just invite the, the good souls into, into the home. And today, I'm, as I said, I am doing this altar for Ruth Be uh, Bader Ginsburg because she was in my life very meaningful and, and I felt a lot of pain when she passed and I just wanted to commemorate her, her, her life through uh, uh, an altar, even though she is Jewish, but I feel that my way to, to give her a tribute of her life is by doing this. And in this altar, what we try to do is captivate a lot of the things that are meaningful to them in life. And for Ruth, one of the biggest parts that, that she loved is to read and poetry. And I have incorporated a, a poetry book and of course, uh, some books about her. And um, she felt that reading is, is the key to, to achieve things. And as you all know, um, she was able to achieve some wonderful things because she loved reading. And you also can see um, some of the food. Um, she loves salmon. I didn't bring the salmon, sorry. Um, and she also liked caviar, caviar, but didn't bring that. But I, she loved hortensias. The hortensias are right there uh, around her. And I tried to also depict that femininity that she has and she did in the different types of flowers and the delicateness of them and incorporating as much white into the altar. Uh, in Bolivia, our altars are either white or black, that's it. And in this, I combined here both colors because of her way of being, even though mm, um, some of those flowers look so delicate, we know that she was so strong 
So in doing this altar, I also try to um, bring in some of the, the uh, memorable things that in my opinion were important to her. There's a picture there uh, with one of the presidents and some of her um, colors that she loved. Um, and uh, of course, what she, the kind of job that she did. And more importantly, is just trying to remember what a wonderful individual this, this person was and just saying thank you, Ruth.